The year was 1985, a turning point for the entire world. There was Reagan versus the USSR. Mr. Gorbachev teared down this wall. The Titanic was found. Live Aid brought us all together in thunderous applause. The Great Commonwealth of Australia was no exception. Releasing films such as Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, generationally popular soap opera Neighbors will debut on the Seven Network, the Australian Act is passed, and most importantly, the debut of the late, great, gone but not forgotten theme park of Wonderland, Sydney. Ahoy, ahar! At Australia's Wonderland, it's a great season, woo hoo, -hoo! Nowhere else in Sydney be you finding all this. Seven dazzling stage shows, dynamite rides, ooh, the best in Australia. And this Saturday at 7, FM Flavored Milk presents You Gotta Rock with Dragon. Only $2 after park admission or free when you present an FM container. Only at Australia's Wonderland. <laughs> you gotta do it. Welcome to Discover, the show about theme park exploration around the world. Today we spin back the time turner to discover what was Australia's Wonderland Sydney. Opened on December 7th, 1985, on the junction of Walgrove Road and the M4 motorway in Sydney's Greater West, the investors of the park wished to create a more stable theme park, an answer to the on and off again Luna Park in Australia. Wonderland was officially split into four themed areas, that being Gold Rush, Medieval Fair, and a Barbera Land and the one seasonal, the beach area of the park. Wonderland Sydney was heavily inspired and ultimately designed to mirror that of Canada's Wonderland, which comes to no surprise as one of the investors of the park, Taft Broadcasting, owned and operated both locations, including owning that of Hanna-Barbera as well. Wonderland was of course known for their rides, such as the premier The Bush Beast, the then largest wooden roller coaster in Australia, not to mention the highly moved around ride Zoomerang, or as some Wonderland guests may refer to it as the Titan or even the Demon, a steel roller coaster that has literally moved around the globe. When guests would make their way around the park, they would come to the family and kid friendly area, named after the characters of Hanna-Barbera Studios. The land featured many themed rides such as the Fred Flintstone Splashdown Vlog Flume. Close by was what some referred to as the Bush Bush Beast Jr., or the Beastie, an all wooden roller coaster installed with the opening of the park. Right outside of Hanna Barbera Land was the Medieval Fair area of the park, which surprisingly did not feature a lot of rides. However, the rides that were in this section of the park had a memorable impact. The swinging fiberglass pirate themed Bounty's Revenge, which was a major fan favorite, remaining inside the park its entire lifespan. Another staple of the park was the ever-popular Gold Rush section of the park, which featured numerous fan-beloved rides and attractions from the Bush Beast Wooden Roller Coaster to the Snowy River Rampage Water Ride, all the way to the slow and peaceful Ampoule Antique Autos, Model T-inspired auto track for all ages. Wonderland Sydney was able to accomplish something for everyone who would visit far and wide, from the fun and lovable characters at Hanna-Barbera to the high thrills in Gold Rush and so much in between. This allowed for the park to capitalize on many theme park trends, giving guests more reasons to keep coming back to the park. Wonderland was financially and commercially successful, expanding on their three seasons later in 1988, when the fourth park, as mentioned earlier, the beach, would begin to operate seasonally. By the late 1980s into the early 1990s, Wonderland would change some things around, starting with the medieval fair rebranding as Old Botany Bay, which would now house Bounty's Revenge, Wonderland Memories, and of course, the ticket booth. In addition to this change, a Transylvania-themed area of the park would open, featuring more darker-themed rides such as the Titan, Wizard's Fury, Dragon's Flight, and the short-lived Space Probe. Space Probe 7 is alive up there. And seems to be feeding off the city's power supply. You identify the aliens. You are about to discover what it is. Let's have a chill moment. Two hundred feet above the ground. As over the next decade, the park saw a lot of successful changes and additions, including the Titan being rebranded as the Demon, becoming another defining coaster for the park. As the seasons came and went, Wonderland would see its first ownership change. In 1992, former minority stake owners Taft Broadcasting would be sold to Viacom, officially being rebranded as Paramount Parks. With this move, 
the remaining stake in Wonderland would be sold to other Australian investors. Only five years later in 1997, the entire park was sold to Sunway Group. It's been 15 years of fun at Wonderland Sydney with over 25 sensational rides. Seven magical lands to visit and great new shows. Action Man Lives, the live action adventure. The Millennium Magic Illusion and Dance Spectacular. We're open seven days, just 15 minutes from the Olympic side. Wonderland Sydney, come join the party. From 1997 to 2004, the entire period of ownership under Sunway Group became a stalemate of park entertainment. The group rarely saw value in the park, only adding one ride, Skyrider, in the seven years of ownership. In 2004, then Sunway Group CEO, Stephen Gilbreth, made the announcement that Wonderland Sydney will be closing for good. The park was at a high level of performance. You can absorb some of those challenges, but it wasn't, it wasn't in that situation at all. Citing many things for the decision of closure including the September 11th terrorist attacks, the 2002 Bali bombings, the collapse of HIH insurance, the SARS virus outbreak of the early 2000s, the collapse of ANZIT Australia, the Iraq war, and the 2003 bushfires, all being mentioned as a decision to close the park. Despite these claims, compact newspaper, the Sydney Morning Herald, stated that Sunway Group blames Wonderland's demise on everything except poor management. The glorious gates of Wonderland Sydney were closed for the final time on April 26, 2004. <laughs> a complete demolition would follow in September 2005. With the closing of the park, Sunway Group would sell a handful of attractions to other theme parks around the world. The Demon was sold to Alabama Adventure, officially becoming Zoomerang, where it would stay in operation until 2012. Bounty's Revenge will be relocated to the Sunway Lagoon, Dragon's Flight to the Lost World of Tanbun, and the majority of all other rides becoming scrapped. As for other artifacts of the park, the famous sign featuring Marvel's Spider-Man and the Incredible Hulk was sold to a junkyard in Londonderry, where it remains to this day. Ever since the closure of the park, Sunray Group would eventually turn the area into Interchange Park, an industrial estate with remains of the park and the surrounding bushland. The new park would pay homage to Wonderland with a street named Wonderland Drive. Wonderland nearing two full decades since its ultimate demise, not all hope is lost. Ever since the park closed, there has been many attempts to bring Sydney and the rest of Australia another widely popular theme park, including the proposed Worlds of Wonder, which would be opened in 2021. However, given financial constraints, the proposal has since fallen through. Other attempts to bring back Wonderland have been discussed. However, nothing concrete has yet to take shape. Wonderland Sydney, the greatest park for the great people of Australia, a diamond in the rough, closed due to poor management and global events, will forever be remembered wonderfully.